Imagine the allure of the forbidden, the thrill of the clandestine, the tantalizing pull of the hidden pleasures of ancient Egypt. Step back in time, over 4,000 years ago. Picture a civilization steeped in enigma, shrouded in mystique, a place where societal norms and taboos painted a captivating tapestry of life. Imagine a society where the Nile dictated the rhythms of daily life, where deities were as numerous as grains of sand in the desert, and where the pharaoh was revered as a living god. The rules were strict, the code of conduct unyielding. But within these constraints, a fascinating undercurrent flowed, a realm of forbidden pleasures, hidden from the prying eyes of the gods and the judgment of society. You see in the shadows of the mighty pyramids away from the bustling marketplaces and grand temples, there existed a world of hushed whispers and secret trysts. These were the pleasures deemed inappropriate by the society, the pursuits that went against the grain of the established norms. But it's in these very pursuits that we discover a side of ancient Egypt that is seldom talked about. These pleasures were not just about indulgence. They were a form of rebellion, a release from the rigidity of societal expectations. They were a way for individuals to assert their identity, to claim a piece of their existence that was truly their own. They were an assertion of the human spirit in its purest form, a testament to our inherent desire for freedom and expression. So, what were these forbidden pleasures, and why were they considered so taboo? The answers to these questions reveal a side of ancient Egypt that challenges our preconceived notions, that compels us to re-evaluate our understanding of this ancient civilization and the people who lived within it. Now let's delve deeper into the fascinating world of ancient Egypt's hidden indulgences. Prepare to be surprised, to be intrigued, to be entranced. For as we peel back the layers of this ancient society, we uncover a world rich in complexity, a world that is as human as it is divine. The pharaohs, revered as gods, were not immune to the enchantment of forbidden pleasures. Picture if you will these divine rulers, ensconced in grand palaces, surrounded by the wealth and splendor of ancient Egypt. Their lives were a heady mix of power, opulence, and yes, indulgence. Imagine a feast laid out before them, a spread fit for the gods. The tables groaned under the weight of platters laden with delicacies like honey-roasted fowl, succulent fruits, and sweet pastries. Wine flowed freely, its intoxicating aroma filling the air, adding to the heady atmosphere of the banquet. But it wasn't just about the food. Oh no. These feasts were also a stage for the pharaohs to display their wealth and power. The grandeur of the event, the extravagance of the feast, all were part of the pharaohs' presentation of themselves as divine as gods among men. And then, there were the intimate affairs. Now, let's be clear. These were not mere dalliances. These were affairs of the heart, of the body, driven by desire and passion. They were intricate dances of seduction and pleasure, conducted in the seclusion of the pharaoh's private quarters. But why were these pleasures considered forbidden? Well, it's all about perception. The pharaohs, remember, were seen as gods. They were supposed to be above earthly desires, detached from mortal indulgences, yet they reveled in them. They sought them out. This dichotomy, this clash between the divine image and the human reality, is what made these pleasures forbidden. And yet despite the taboo, despite the potential for scandal, the pharaohs continued to indulge. They were drawn to these forbidden pleasures, just as we, in our own ways, are drawn to the allure of the forbidden. It's a reminder perhaps that even those who are revered as gods are, at their core, fundamentally human. Even the gods among men were not above the lure of the forbidden. A thought-provoking sentiment, isn't it? As we delve deeper into the world of ancient Egypt, we'll continue to uncover more such intriguing facets of their lives. Until then, keep questioning, keep exploring, and as always, stay curious. The priesthood, guardians of morality and spirituality, held secrets of their own. We delve into the heart of ancient Egypt's religious authority, where a dichotomy of public virtue and private indulgence unfolds. Picture this. Priests, revered as intermediaries between the gods and humanity, maintaining the sanctity of the temples and leading the masses in spiritual rituals. Yet behind the veil of their holy robes, they too were enticed by the allure of forbidden pleasures. Let's unmask this contradiction. The priests were not just spiritual guides, they were also scholars, physicians and astrologers. Their roles were not confined to the temples, they were woven into the everyday fabric of society. As such, they were privy to knowledge and pleasures that were considered taboo for the common people. Imagine the moonlit banks of the Nile, where clandestine gatherings were held under the cover of darkness. The priests, cloaked in anonymity, 
would partake in rituals that involved the consumption of sacred plants, believed to unlock the doors to divine ecstasy. These were not mere frivolous indulgences, they were seen as spiritual journeys, paths to enlightenment that were inaccessible to the ordinary man. In the daylight, the priests would return to their public roles, their secrets safely tucked away. Their indulgences did not tarnish their image as the moral compass of society. Instead it added a layer of mystique, a hidden depth to their character. This dual existence was a tightrope walk, a balancing act between the sacred and the profane, However, this exploration is not to pass judgment but to understand the complexity of human nature, even in those elevated to divine status. The priests, despite their high moral standing, were not immune to the pull of forbidden pleasures. Perhaps it was their way of connecting with the gods, or maybe it was a means to escape the weight of their responsibilities. Every secret adds a layer to the complexity of ancient Egypt's societal structure. The priesthood's secret lives serve as a reminder that we are all human, susceptible to temptation and capable of harboring secrets, no matter our standing in society. The common folk, bound by societal norms, found their own ways to experience forbidden pleasures. As we delve deeper into the everyday life of ancient Egypt's commoners, we find that even they, despite the shackles of societal norms, found avenues to experience the so-called forbidden pleasures. In a society where the hierarchy was strictly defined, the common folk lived under the constant watch of morality, but therein lies the paradox of human nature. The more you restrict, the more the curiosity to break free. And so, they devised their own ways to break these societal norms and indulge in the forbidden. Imagine the thrill of a clandestine meeting under the moonlit sky, the stolen glances, the hushed whispers, the exhilaration of a forbidden love, the secrecy heightening the pleasure of the moment. These were the moments that added a dash of color to their otherwise monotonous lives. But it wasn't just about romantic escapades. Pleasures came in various forms. For some it was the pleasure derived from art and music. For others, it was the joy of storytelling, the thrill of a dice game, or the satisfaction of a well-brewed beer. In a world where the pharaohs and the priests had their own secret lives, the common folk too found solace in their own version of the forbidden. These pleasures though frowned upon by the high and mighty, played a crucial role in shaping their lives, providing them with an outlet to express their individuality, to experience a sense of freedom, however fleeting it might have been. And so, Despite the societal norms, despite the fear of retribution, they found ways to experience these forbidden pleasures, because at the end of the day, they were human too, with desires, dreams, and a longing for that which was deemed off-limits. The forbidden held a universal appeal transcending societal hierarchies. Regardless of one's position in the societal ladder, the allure of the forbidden was too strong to resist. It was a common thread that bound the pharaohs, the priests, and the common folk alike each finding their own ways to experience the pleasures they were denied. The legacy of ancient Egypt's forbidden pleasures still resonates today. In the grand tapestry of human history, the threads of Egypt's sensual pursuits have woven themselves into our modern consciousness. From the intimate rituals of the pharaohs to the secret lives of the priesthood, these practices have found their way into our collective psyche, reshaped and redefined by the passage of time. Imagine, if you will, the influence of these forbidden pleasures on our contemporary culture. The echoes of Egypt's past can be found in our art, our literature, and our understanding of sensuality. The intricate murals of the pharaoh's tombs have inspired countless artists, while the tales of their intimate rituals have found their way into the pages of our novels and the scripts of our movies. And the secret practices of the priesthood? They've given us a fresh perspective on the sacred and the sensual, challenging our preconceived notions and inviting us to explore new realms of pleasure. But it's not just about art and entertainment. These ancient practices have also shaped our attitudes towards pleasure and intimacy. The Egyptians' open celebration of sensuality, their reverence for the human body, and their understanding of pleasure as a divine gift have all contributed to a broader, more inclusive view of sexuality. They've taught us to embrace our desires, to seek pleasure without guilt or shame, and to see intimacy as an integral part of our human experience. Yet, as we navigate the complexities of our modern world, we also grapple with the allure of the forbidden. Just like the ancient Egyptians, we are drawn to the thrill of the unknown, the excitement of transgression, and the allure of stepping beyond societal boundaries. The legacy of the forbidden, then, 
is not just about pleasure, but also about our endless quest for freedom, for self-expression and for authentic human connection. The allure of the forbidden, a tale as old as time, continues to captivate us even today.